Now for our discussion on the structure of DNA. As you'll remember from the previous video on cells, DNA is kept inside of the nucleus of a cell and it controls what a cell is going to become. So different parts of your DNA can be turned on or off to make different cells of your body become hair cells or eye cells or skin cells or any of the other cells found in your body. So let's take a look at what DNA actually looks like. So DNA is one type of nucleic acid. Um, it's important to know that all nucleic acids are made of monomers, and another word for monomer is a building block. So all nucleic acids are made of building blocks, or monomers, called nucleotides. So when you're looking at DNA, it's made of a, some repeating units called nucleotides. And nucleotides look like this, um, this purple, green, and red structure. And um, in class we call this a pool house driveway because the circle looks like a pool, the sugar looks like a house and the nitrogen base looks like a driveway. Um, but you need to know the actual names of these structures. So the round structure is a phosphate and the pentagon is a five carbon sugar. We say it's five carbons because each point represents a carbon. And then right here we have nitrogen bases. Now nitrogen bases can be adenine, which starts with a T, an A, thymine, which starts with a T, guanine, which starts with a G, cytosine, which starts, which starts with a C, um, or uracil, which starts with a U. So these red structures can be any of these. Now it turns out the thing that makes your DNA different from my DNA is we have a different arrangement of these nitrogen bases in our DNA. We have the same phosphate and sugar on the side, but our nitrogen bases are different. Um, when you look at DNA, it's in the shape of a double helix. So a double helix is a twisted ladder. But if you zoom into DNA and actually look at its molecular structure and the atoms that are being bound together, you'll see that if we flatten that double helix, it looks like a ladder. So our rungs of the ladder are made of the purple and green structures. And remember, the purple is a phosphate and the green is a sugar. So we have purple and green on both sides because there's two strands hooked together. And then we have the red nitrogen bases in the center. So we have one strain of DNA hooked to another strain of DNA. Now there's a special bond that hooks those red nitrogen bases together. That's called a hydrogen bond. Uh, one hydrogen bond is relatively weak, but you can think of hydrogen bonds kind of like Velcro. Um, if you put a lot of pieces of, to, of Velcro together, then it makes a strong bond. But individually, the hydrogen bonds are weak. And that enables our DNA, our separate strands of DNA to unzip. Um, and then you'll note here that we have certain letters that match up across from one another. Now, like I said, we have certain letters that match across from one another. If you'll remember that our um, nitrogen bases can be A's, T's, C's, G's, or U's. And it turns out that only certain letters can hydrogen bond, with together, um, hydrogen bond together. So A binds with T, so adenine binds with thymine, or uracil. Now, we don't have U's in DNA. We only have T's in DNA, no U's. Um, when we talk about RNA, and you can see the RNA video, we'll discuss U's there. Um, and G's bind with C. Now, in our class, we talk about an easy way to remember this. Um, we have the college, Guilford College in Greensboro. So Guilford in college, G binds with C, or C binds with G. It goes both directions. And then North Carolina A and T University. So we have A binds with T, so, or T binds with A. Now remember, A can also bind with U, but that's only in RNA, not in DNA. Um, uh, what sugar does DNA have? DNA has deoxyribose sugar. So if you look at the previous um, slide, the green pentagon structure um, looks like, or is called, deoxyribose. So when you see this in DNA, that's deoxyribose sugar. If you'll remember, os, um, the suffix means that it's a sugar, or usually is a sign that what you're talking about is a sugar. And also, DNA starts with a D because it stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So deoxyribose, DNA. Um, is DNA double or single stranded? DNA is double stranded. If DNA was single stranded, it would look like half of a ladder, or a ladder that's been cut in half. But it's double stranded. So we have two strands of DNA hooked together with those hydrogen bonds down the center. And where is DNA located in a eukaryotic cell? It's kept in the nucleus. Now let's discuss DNA replication. Um, DNA, replica DNA replicates before a cell divides. Um, and if you don't know what replicate means, it's just another word for copy. So if we were to copy the Mona Lisa, that copy would be called a replica. So replication is the process of making a copy. 
So we always copy our DNA before a cell divides. Um, now let's look at our steps of DNA replication. We start by unzipping our DNA. And when we unzip our DNA, we have to break those hydrogen bonds to hook the two strands of DNA together. So when, when we unzip our DNA, we break the hydrogen bonds. So as you can see here, our two strands of DNA are unzipping, and we already have two hydrogen bonds broken, and it will continue to unzip. After we've unzipped our DNA, we have our two old strands on the side, and then we uh, bring in our new nitrogen bases, or our matching nitrogen bases are added to each old strand. So we start with the green strands, and then we have to add in the letters that match. And it's important to know this word complementary, it's just a synonym for matching. So remember we said A binds with T and G binds with C, so A and T are said to be matching or complementary, and G and C are said to be matching or complementary. So wherever we have an A, we'll need to bring in another T, C, we'd bring in, another, bring in another G, and so on. So we started with A, C, C, G, T, T on the left-hand side of our old strand. So we bring in a T, G, G, C, A, A. Um, and then same with the other side. Um, the green is the other half of our old strand that has been unzipped. We bring in our, um, or actually this is reversed. Green is our old strand and purple is our new strand. So we have unzipped our DNA and we have to bring in the new letters for this side. So these are our two old strands and we're adding the purple portion. In order to figure out what you're adding, just figure out which base is complementary. So if you had a T on the old strand, you'd add in an A to the new strand. Now if you make a mistake when you're replicating DNA or any change to a DNA sequence, it's called a mutation. Now all mutations are not bad. Usually you don't even know if you have a mutation, but some of them are bad and some of them are beneficial. Um, after we've made our, or brought in our new nitrogen bases to each side of the DNA, the DNA is going to seal back together. If you'll remember, hydrogen bonds are the bonds that seal our two strands of DNA together. And our product of replication are two identical molecules of DNA. So we have one molecule of DNA here and one molecule of DNA here, and they're identical. If you look at the letters or the nitrogen bases, they're exactly the same. Um, but they both have one old strand and one new strand. So you see old and new and new and old, but they are identical. All right, let's do some practice now. So um, you need to remember which bases bind together, which ones are complementary. So it says, what DNA sequence is complementary to the following DNA sequence? And they give you A, T, C, G, C, A. So you have to remember your base pair rule. A binds with T. T binds with A, C binds with G, G binds with C, C binds with G, and A binds with T. So this green portion would be your complementary strand of DNA, or the DNA strand that's complementary to the one they gave you. Second question, what DNA sequence is complementary to the following DNA sequence? So they give you G, G, C, A, A, T. So again, G binds with C, G binds with C, C binds with G, T, T, A. And there you go, those are your complementary strands.